everyone. This is criminal profiler Pat Brown, and we have a lot of breaking news today on the Madeleine McCann case. And I've had people sending me emails and messages saying, what do you think? What do you think? Okay. So I'm going to tell you what I think. Uh, and let me read you. There's a couple of news articles that have come out, and it's hard to tell where the truth lies in them because it's the media, and I'm never sure the media is saying anything accurately. But let me discuss both of these articles and tell you what I think about them. All right. First, this article says, convicted German rapist Christian Bruckner declared prime suspect in the disappearance of Madeleine McCann. And what's happened is uh, Portugal, and I've called this uh, video, Portugal has fallen. Portugal has now declared Bruckner and our Guido, which is a suspect. Now, that alone, I would say this with that article. Uh, Gonzalo Amaral has something to say about it. He says it's a political trick. Uh, and I agree with him because I think Portugal has fallen to politics. So there's, it's a really long story. And if anybody doesn't really know the entire Madeleine McCann story, then you're going to need to do some research. I have three links below. One is to my video on Madeleine McCann here at YouTube. One is on a recent one when Scotland Yard said, hey, we're wrapping it up. Uh, and the third one is to my book called Profile of the Disappearance of Madeleine McCann. Uh, for the rest of you <laughs> who know this, this story and the saga very, very well, I'm just going to continue on to tell you what I think. All right. Uh, when Gonzalo Amaral was uh, investigating the case, he determined that there was no evidence of an abduction. That I agree with entirely. Uh, he found the McCann's behavior, the parents of Madeleine McCann, their behavior to be extremely suspicious. All right, there were a number of reasons to look at the McCann's. One, yes, there were no signs of an abduction at all. Nobody, there was no proof of anybody coming into that uh, vacation flat and prior delusion. There was no evidence of anybody taking a child out of that flat. Uh, the McCann stories that night were strange and, and didn't quite match the evidence. There was the issue of when they brought the cadaver and blood dogs in, they hit behind the sofa, indicating that someone had died in the vacation flat and their body ended up behind the sofa. Also, one of, one of the biggest things for me was that uh, there, was, uh, there were two sightings the night that Madeline went missing. And the second sighting was by the Smith family, and it was of a man going toward the beach. Uh, the McCanns never showed any interest in that sighting. They only wanted the first sighting. Why? Because at that point, Jerry McCann, the father of Madeline, had an alibi, a, a, an absolute alibi. But the second, the second sighting, he did not have an alibi. And the guy supposedly looked sort of like Jerry McCann. Now, I don't see why. This guy, let's say this guy were really guilty. He could have been carting Madeline down the street when the Smith family saw him. But, you know, but yet the, the McCanns were not interested in that sighting at all. They never pushed for that man to be found. And it was the most suspicious part of this whole case for me. All right, there's a million other reasons. <laughs> okay, maybe I'm exaggerating. But there are many other reasons to believe there was never an objection. So, uh, Gonzalo Amaral wrote a book. He got sued by the McCanns. It was pulled off the market many court dates. Anyway, he got it back and he wrote a second book. Now, then uh, the next part is Scotland Yard. Scotland Yard suddenly comes into the picture and what they do is they say, oh, we're not going to look at the McCanns at all. Even though we're just arriving to uh, investigate this case, to, to do a whole review, we're not going to look at any of the evidence that might point to the McCanns. We're going to have a remit that says the McCanns are not suspects, period. And I said the minute that happened, this is not a real investigation because no police agency ever investigates by excluding someone before they're actually proven to be unable to have committed the crime. So I knew it was phony. And because of that happened, uh, I said right away, hey, that's just a phony investigation. Scotland Yard is never going to go after the McCanns in any way. And many people were upset with me. They said, you know, you, you, don't, you know, you're not... How can you say this about our, you know, it's Scotland Yard. Scotland Yard is a huge police agency. How can you say that, you know, Operation Grange is, you know, they're putting tons of money into it. They, I believe they're going to eventually come up and go after the McCanns. And I said, nah, that's never going to happen. <laughs> it's never going to happen because they made that statement to begin with. 
Now, I thought the reason this all happened was political, that after Gonzalo Ramos was chucked off the case, um, and now Portugal started finding Aguidos here and there, so this guy's not the first Aguido. There were other ones that they came up with, uh, and, and so it is, and then Scotland Yard came up with their versions, and I believed it was all political. And now we have at the 15th year where, you know, this case would have to close down, suddenly Portugal says he's an Arguido. So I agree with Gonzalo Amaral. This is just a political ploy, um, a little political, a little trick, a procedural trick. Um, and now everybody's on the same page, which is also very interesting. Now, there's one more story that just came out, and I'm a little confused about, you know, this just came out. Um, well, let's see. Yeah, just came out. It says here, Madeleine McCann, police charge German suspect in connection with disappearance of Madeleine McCann. Now, it says here, uh, a, a Portuguese pro prosecutor confirmed a suspect in Germany had been charged in connection with the disappearance of the toddler. Uh, what we heard earlier that was just that uh, he was an Arguido, a suspect, but now they're saying he's been charged with the crime based on, and get this, based on some people's, some people's statements and his cell phone pinging, which, by the way, uh, the, the prosecutor in Germany never could come up with a, <clears throat> that the cell phone actually pinged anywhere, in, you know, exactly where Madeline went missing. And, and you have a few b people that hung out with him once and thought he said some strange things. This is not sufficient evidence to go to prosecution, but apparently they're doing that. At le least that's what it seems like they're doing. I don't know if that news report is accurate. I saw a couple of them that say he has been charged, so I don't know. Is he just an Arguido, a suspect, or has he been truly charged? Now, something else I said, and also Gonzalo said this too, that we both believed that eventually they would shut this case down uh, with somebody, a patsy, essentially. And I always believed it would be one of two kinds of people. One would be a dead pedophile. A dead pedophile can't talk, and he can look creepy and like he could have done it. Or they'd find a convicted pedophile, somebody at least believable to be a creepy dude, if he's not even a pedophile, at least a rapist, and they finally found this guy. All right, and what happens at this point is that it's, it's easy to believe for people who do not understand the evidence in this case. It's easy to believe it could be this dude. He lived in Prior de Luge. He's creepy. He likes to kind of rape some people. And, uh, you know, he said things about kids. So, hey, could be this guy. But you don't convict people and you don't even charge people based on it could be the guy. You charge based on evidence. They have no physical evidence whatsoever. They have no body. They've got no DNA. They don't, they don't have any materials like uh, associated with um, Madeleine McCann, like her clothing or something. They don't have any photos of her in his in his like you know locker or something. And they dug the heck out of every place he 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 lived. They don't have any of that. What they've got is some people saying some things about him and. Supposedly that he, had, he used a cell phone in the vicinity of Prior Deluge. This is it. That is not sufficient evidence. It's not even probable cause, but they're doing it, possibly, if, if the, the second report is true that he has been charged. Now, if he has been charged, here are the two possible outcomes. One is that he could go to trial, and that would be very tricky because they really don't have the evidence. The second possibility is that he will take a plea deal. And I don't really understand the German system, so if I'm completely wrong on this, Germans jump in. Um, in the US, I've had cases where I know the guy didn't commit the crime, but he took a plea deal because in doing so, he got some benefit, like lesser time on the other crimes, or in, in the United States, maybe he got out of a death penalty and then got life in prison, or maybe he got transferred to a better location where he could have a, a, better, a better sentence in prison. So they'll confess to things they didn't do if they're going to get a deal out of it. Also, at some point, if he's going to be in prison for the rest of his life, he might want to take credit for the murder of, Mad uh, for the murder, I'll put quotes on that, murder, abduction and murder of Madeleine McCann, because then he could be an anti-hero. 
and sometimes yeah, it gets you a lot of attention, even gets you books written about you, you know, and the media will show up and do more stories about you. And if you're already in prison, what the heck, you might as well get, you know, get something out of being there. So he might confess even if he didn't do it. So I don't buy any of this garbage because the evidence does not support that there's enough to charge him with anything and the evidence doesn't even support an abduction. So that's my thoughts on this today. <sighs> Something I sort of expected at, at some point would happen, but, and here the day is where it has happened. So uh, not surprised, not happy about it, but not surprised. Anyway, that's it. Uh, I might come back uh, another time when we have more more information on this, the, the, what's happening with Bruckner and the Madeleine McCann case. Anyway, if you're new to the channel, please do like this video, subscribe, and check the playlist for all the other cases that I talk about, and I'll probably see you again soon. Bye.